Hey guys, welcome back to episode four of Project Rebuild 2022, the PlayStation 3 edition. So if you're new to my channel, please click on my channel, go and check out the previous videos to see which games I've already added to the collection. But 2022 is the year that I rebuild the PlayStation 3 collection, and so far so good. I've got 25 games I think over there so far, and I picked up another nine today. I'm doing really well. So as I've said in previous videos, there are two shops in my area two CEX shops. There's a small one and there's a larger one. Went to the larger one today for the first time in a long time and I got really lucky. They had a massive selection. It's a really good the large one is because they have a big amount of stock and so you get multiple copies of games and you get more variety. The little shop doesn't have a well in fact most of these games I haven't seen in the little shop. A couple I have but I didn't pick them up because the condition wasn't good enough but the majority I, I, I the first time I found them was today so very happy. I will say before I show you the games, some of the games are getting more difficult to find now. I've only got the two shops to go to and things like Ridge Racer 7, which is to me would be a more common game. I'm finding it, but I'm either finding it, I found it at the little shop, it didn't have a manual. Went to the big one today and the artwork was damaged. So, and I think the manual was missing as well, if I remember correctly. So I'm not having much success and it's annoying because I really want to play that game. Now I could just pick it up on eBay, but it's not as fun as buying it in the wild. But if it comes to that, it comes to that, because I don't want to get the price going up on that game and have to pay silly money for it, which hopefully will never happen. Uh, also, Bloodstone, the Bond game. I still can't find a copy of that. One I need to get, because it's one of my absolute favourite games of this generation. And yeah, the Bond games in general, I've seen 007 Legends, and I've seen Quantum of Solace. I've seen Goldeneye, but I haven't seen Bloodstone. And I haven't picked up Goldeneye because it's uh, six quid, I think, at the moment, or eight quid, might have been eight quid. In fact, I think it was eight quid when I saw it today. There's a couple of copies. Now, I budget anyway. I only set myself a limit of £20 when I go to CEX. That's it. That's why I don't get lots of games. I set myself 20 and that's enough then because I can bring them home, play them, enjoy them, and then go and buy some more when I'm ready. So, I've got nine games today, as I say. Did really, really well. Went slightly over budget. But that was, you know, because I thought, well, there's one game at the end, I think it was, that I thought I'd just grab. It was a little bit more expensive wasn't massively expensive, but I thought I'd just add it. So I went up to 25 today, which, you know, <laughs> it's not exactly massively over budget. So, yeah, anyway, without further ado, let's have a look at what I got. So first up, a game I really enjoyed this generation. I haven't actually gone back and played it yet, so I will do that at some point. But when it came out, I've had a lot of fun with it, apart from the end of the game, which frustrated me. Prince of Persia, The Forgotten Sands, and I've only played a few Prince of Persia games over the years. I played the original PC game, I played it on the Super Nintendo as well. I played Sands of Time, Two Thrones, and the other one I can't remember the name of that came out Xbox PS2 era. And I played a little bit of that Cell Shady one that's on PS3, which I probably will pick up again. I believe Nolan North, um, Nathan Drake, is the voice of that character. And I thought it was okay. I'm not big on cell shaded anyway. Some things like 13 on the Xbox and PS2, great, but it's not really my art style of choice. But this one, Forgotten Sands, I remember really, really enjoying this game. It's made by the guys that did uh, Sands of Time as well, so it's probably why it's so good. But it's for me, it's my favourite game, and it's the only Prince of Persia I've completed. So that shows you how much I enjoyed it. I do remember though, at the end of the game, they make you use every button on the controller, and it gets, and you have to freeze freeze platforms and just jump in and it becomes really hard and i remember at the time throwing my it's the one in fact i think it's the only game i've literally thrown my controller i've like banged the controller before but i literally just went like that and it bounced and went flying across the room yeah i was really pissed off playing it but <laughs> silly game of age but the game itself is brilliant I highly recommend it if you've never played it it's one of the best prince of persia games out there as far as i'm concerned Next is a game I recently played a couple of months back on Xbox 360. Didn't finish it because I switched to PS3, so I've been trying to find a copy ever since. Finally got one today, because when I found it before, it's not had manuals, been in bad condition. But I got a good copy today, so I'm going to sit down and finish it. And I know it's a short game because I've played through it when it first came out. And that's Homefront. So, really cool. North Korean invasion of America. And you basically have to kill all the North Koreans and get them out of America. Really fun. As I say, I started playing it on the Xbox a few months back. I actually thought it was quite good. It holds up. Man. It looks really nice graphically. Uh, the guns, the aiming, and that, not the greatest in the world. I felt it was a bit off, but, you know, it's it's passable. Um, the characters are a bit funny. Some of the dialogue, you know, it's an earlier game. But, no, it's pretty good. So, I'm looking forward to sitting down and just 
playing back through it again, I don't think I'm ever going to get the second game, which it never looked that great to me. It never looked that interesting. And I think it's more multiplayer focused. I'm not certain on that. Well, I think it is. So, yeah, I'll probably never get that one. But at least I've got the first one. Next up, I've completed my Call of Duty set. Yes! So, <laughs> I've not been able to find this game. Every time I've gone to the little shop, they've never had this cop this game in. I went into the big one today, and they've got multiple copies, about four or five copies of it. So, I just picked up the best one. And that is Call of Duty World at War. Now, if you watch me regularly, I talked about this earlier in the year, because I finished this on 360 again playing it for the first time since launch because it was always the one that I never wanted to go back to, my least favourite Call of Duty. Uh, if you're watching me for the first time, you've never seen my channel, I only play Call of Duty campaigns. I don't do multiplayer. I don't care. So for me, World at War was the campaign that I never really cared too much about. I thought the German sections were great. The American sections were boring. So I never went back to it. But I went back and played it recently, as I say, a few months back on Xbox 360. Completed it. Had an absolute blast. And I was like, wow. That game is not the one I thought it was. It's really good. I still think the Russian missions are far superior to the American missions, but the American missions are actually quite fun. It gets quite intense, especially when the guys are jumping up out of the ground and running at you. Know, it's proper mental. But yeah, it was really, really surprising how much I had, how much fun I had with it, how much I enjoyed it. Still, one of my favourites is the Russian mission when you wake up on the floor and there's dead bodies all around you and the Germans are killing the Russians. And then there's one guy alive and he calls you over. And like you're running through a building, you look down the courtyard, and there's all these Nazis. It's absolutely the graphics mm. for the age of the game. It's aged really well. That's one thing I'll, I'll always keep saying. I love this generation because the graphics at holding got really well. Uh, I'm really surprised. And obviously, when you look at like the the games near the end of the generation, they're definitely going to hold up well. But a lot of the early games still hold up. They still look good. They still control well. And I think that's a big thing with this generation. They really perfected the controls as well. So. It's not difficult to go back and play these games, even if the graphics may look a little bit rough in compared to what we've got now. So next up is a game I've talked about a million times on my channel because it is absolutely one of my absolute favourite games of this generation. A must-buy must game, a game that I go back to every single year, I play it multiple times. It's a case of, if I've got nothing else to play, I play 007 Quantum of Solace. This game is awesome. Absolutely fantastic title. And I'll say it again, I've said it before, but if you've never played it, please treat yourself. It's so much fun. It, it's a first-person shooter that also mixes in third-person cover action, and it works really, really well. Treyarch did a great job of blending the two styles. Uh, not an easy thing to do right, but they really nailed it. Um, most of it is Casino Royale, not Quantum of Solace. Really, you get a bit of Quantum at the beginning, and then it does a flashback, and you do a lot of Casino Royale. But I don't care. It plays really well, and it's a great game. The gunplay is really solid, the controls are really tight, the graphics are still beautiful, and it's just a lot of fun, really well thought out, really well designed, and yeah, cannot praise it enough, I love that game. The Bond games this generation, apart from 007 Legends, which is an alright game, it's not a crap one, but apart from that one, I think they absolutely nailed it, you know, we've Quantum of Solace, Bloodstone, which is my favourite, I absolutely love that game, Goldeneye Reloaded, which is absolutely incredible, you know, can't go wrong, it's just Legends is a bit, eh. But it's still a decent game. Next up is a game. I think it was. It was. A, I think it was in launch window. I'm not entirely certain. It's definitely an early game because it's got the uh, like quantum. It's got the PlayStation 3 logo up there. This is a game that I in a genre that I don't personally like. But I remember playing this. I never managed to finish it, unfortunately. But I remember playing this when it came out, and I absolutely loved it. And that is Heavenly Sword. Uh, I think she's called Noriko, if I remember correctly. It's been a long time since I played this. I mean, look at the artwork. Absolutely superb. I just remember playing the demo of this and have been like, wow, that game is incredible. And played the full game, I was blown away. You know, Andy Serkis is doing some of the acting. The cutscenes are great. Um, I can't remember the name of the girl that's with you. You've got this little female character that follows you around. She's bloody annoying. Besides that, it, <laughs> it was really good. Some of the boss fights were really cool. Um, the, I felt like the, the hack and slash, as I say, I'm not a fan of like, the God of War type games. And so that would have put me off this. But when I played it, I was really surprised how nice it feels. It chains together the moves really nicely. It looks absolutely glorious. It's really fun. So yeah, I never managed to finish it. I got quite far into it and got stuck, unfortunately. So one day, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to try and do it because I really want to beat Heavenly Sword. It's a real shame. They never made Heavenly Sword 2. I mean, I know they've got those... Um... Oh, God, I can't remember what the game's called. The one they're doing, they've done recently. Uh, I think they made two of them. But... Yeah, Ninja Theory, great, great company. Um, yeah, I mean, they're owned by Microsoft now, so... Oh, well. <laughs> I won't be able to play their games. 
Next up is one I've been looking for for a while. Another one that I absolutely love from this generation. There's so many great games this generation. And it's a sequel to a game I already own over there. And for me, it's the better of the two games. And that is Infamous 2. I absolutely love this. Open world, superhero. It's just absolutely awesome. And it's in like a New Orleans setting. So it's really bright and colourful. You play as Cole. They really, really took the first one to another level with number two. And I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And recently it was great because I came across a new YouTube channel I've not found before. Easy Going Gaming over in America. He's down in the south and he makes absolutely fantastic videos. So I'll definitely put a link down in the description, guys. Check his channel out, see what you think. He's got a massive collection. And he does a lot of great videos just talking about his experiences playing games, which I really, really enjoy and relate to. And recently he played the two infamous games and it was just great to watch him playing for the first time, talking about his experiences with these games and how much he enjoyed them and the things he liked, the things he didn't like. Great videos and really, really nice guy as well. I've talked to him in the comments a few times. He's commented on my videos. I've commented on his. Top lad. So please check out Easy Going Gaming. Uh, next up, I've got a game that I believe was a launch title. I'm pretty certain I had this with Resistance, and that is Motorstorm. I'll be honest with you, I don't remember much about this other than the graphics were absolutely stunning. And one of the games that made me go, I need a PlayStation 3 because it looked absolutely ridiculous. So I'm looking forward to trying it again. It's just a racing game. As I, said, I don't remember much about I've never played the other two games, so I'm going to pick those up when they come, whenever I find them in the store. Um, breathtakingly brutal off-road racing. I mean, what more do you need? So I will get the other ones and try that out. But I'm looking forward to sitting down with that one and giving it a blast. So I've got two more to show you. Uh, one is like easily regarded as one of the best games on the console. And the other one is a game that I found out about a hit, uh, through a Hidden Gems video. So first of all, we've got The Last of Us, which I've got on PS4, but I had to get the PS3 version. Uh, I've got a proper version as well, because a lot of the time they sell the, pla the pack-in versions in CEX. I always seem to pick those up by mistake. So yeah, I got the right one this time, which is brilliant. Last of Us, not much to say. I mean, it's Naughty Dog. The game's phenomenal. Still need to play the sequel. Luckily, I've avoided a lot of the spoilers, so thank God for that. Although I did find out something the other week, which was like, oh, wish I hadn't known that, but there you go. But yeah, I've got the PS4 version, which plays incredible. I think it's 60 frames. I'm not entirely certain. I think it is. But yeah, had to get the original just because I got it. It's all on the disc. Don't have to worry about it. It's on the PS3. And, you know, whenever I want to play the PS3 version, I've got it. And I played it again a couple of years back, and it's still brilliant. It still holds up exceptionally well. All right, last game. The last game, as I say, I saw in a Hidden Gems video. I've been watching a few of those to try and get some ideas like it's hidden gems, underrated, overlooked, those kind of videos, just to get an idea of games I may not be aware of. Because as I said in the previous video, there were a lot of games I played demos for I didn't like, never picked the games up, and now I've talked about them because I finally played them and actually enjoyed them. So games like Turning Point Fall of Liberty or Legendary, you know, the games that are just, they sort of get glossed over because people are looking at the bigger AAA budget games. And this one came up in a hidden gems video recently, and the guy, I remember playing the demo and thought the demo was shite, but the guy was saying how much he's, how much fun he had with it, and thank you for that, <laughs> how much fun it is, and it's a definite hidden gem one you should absolutely try. And as I was watching the gameplay he, he put on his video, I was like, actually, it looks pretty good, because it's not what I expected, um, and it is Vin Diesel's Wheelman. So I always thought this was just a racing game, so I'm pretty sure that's all we had in the demo, is just car action. But no, you do actually get out of the car and go into third person and control Vin Diesel, which, you know, how is that not a reason to play this? So yeah, it's on the Hidden Gems video. If that's only one video I've seen it so far, if that starts happening, this will probably go up in price. Now this cost me the grand total of £2.50, so I would recommend getting it if you haven't picked it up because you never know, it might be one of those weird, obscure games that just rises in price and in a few years it's unobtainable. So also guys, what do you prefer? I know what I prefer. Do you prefer the PlayStation 3, or do you prefer the PS3? I think the PlayStation 3, look at that. I think PlayStation 3 looks so much better. I wish they stuck with that. Although, they've got PlayStation 3, but on the spine, it's got the red PS3, which is kind of annoying. I wish there was a consistency. At least they could have made that black and white or something, just to match up with that. But, oh, well, you can't have it all, can you? Um, also, artwork's pretty good. So, yeah. <laughs> so there you go. That's the latest nine additions to the collection. There will be more videos. Of course, there are a lot more PlayStation 3 games I need to buy. I've got a long list that I want to get. And I'm always finding out about new games through Hidden Gem videos. And if you've got any suggestions for any of those lower tier games, such as The Wheelman, Turning Point, 
Legendary, any of those games that people don't talk about, Quantum Theory, those kind of games, uh, Inversion, which is one I'm looking forward to that I couldn't find, unfortunately. Please let me know because I want to check them out because I'm being really surprised how much fun I'm having, how good those games actually are when you scratch the surface. So if you like this video, guys, as always, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out. And if you want to see more videos from me about the PlayStation 3 collection or anything else that I'm talking about, just whack the subscribe button, ring the notification bell. YouTube will let you know when my next video goes live. And thank you very much for watching. I look forward to your comments down below as always, guys. And I'll see you next time.